What's up YouTube? This is Jeremy, an associate librarian at the Mandel Public Library of West Palm Beach. And I've got another Audacity Quick Tips and Tricks video for you. In this video, we're going to be talking about working with multiple tracks as well as labeling and track syncing. First, I'm going to play this. I recorded a bit earlier just so you can see what we're working with. I'm track one. And I'm track two. Birthday happy. All right, not too interesting right now. If you look down here at the timeline, you can see that we're working with two tracks. This blue blob here is when I say I'm track one. This blob here is when I say I'm track two. So let's go ahead and title these tracks accordingly, just so we can keep track of them. So up here, there's a little track menu. You can click right here in this little drop down or where it says audio track to open the menu or you can hold shift and press the M key and this will bring up a track menu. I'm going to hit name. So I'm going to call this track one. And let's do the same thing down here for our second track. I'm just going to click hit name track two. So now we've given our tracks titles just so it's a little easier for us to keep track of it. These track titles aren't super interesting or incredibly useful at this point, but if you have like a music track or a sound effects track, it can help to give those tracks titles like music track or sound effects track or, you know, Jeremy speaking track. Or if I have another guest and they have separate audio, we can name that the guest's audio. It's just a way for us to keep track of which tracks are which while we're working on our podcast. And this may not be a big deal when you're only working with a couple tracks, but when you start layering in multiple guests, maybe multiple music tracks, your timeline can get kind of crowded and it helps to give things clear titles just so it's easier for you to keep track of what everything is without having to listen to the whole thing. Since we've titled our tracks, track one and track two, we don't really need this part where I say I'm track one, I'm track two, so we'll go ahead and remove it. So I'm gonna click and drag. Now I can hit delete and you'll see when I've selected an area or region on the timeline here and delete it, it's going to close up that space. So it'll shift all the other audio to the left. This is great if that's what you want to do, but if you're trying to keep things synchronized, its position relative to the other track has changed. So there's actually a way of getting around that. I'm going to hit control Z to go back. So another thing we can do is hit edit, remove special and then split delete. Or you can hold Control, Alt, and K, or Command, Alt, K if you're on an Apple computer. So you can see that it removed this region of the clip without actually shifting its position. This can be useful if you're trying to retain relative positions of one track to another, and you just wanna get rid of a little unnecessary sound without shifting everything. Like say someone coughs, or there's a sharp inhalation, which you might hear on your tracks. That's an easy way of just removing that region without shifting everything's position because it will shift everything to the right if you don't do that split delete. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. I'm gonna control Z though, because I wanna show you something else. There's another feature in Audacity that can be kind of handy, but can also burn you if you're not careful. It's called sync lock. So we can get to that by going tracks, sync lock tracks and now we've turned it on you can tell it's on because now over here on each track you'll see a little clock icon that means sync lock is on so what does that mean one thing it means if we move this chunk of audio it's going to move every track all together it's all synchronized another thing that means if we select this region and hit delete yes it will close up that space by moving everything to the right to the left over that space However, it's doing that to every track all at once. So this can be a pretty handy tool for making changes when you know you wanna change everything all together, but if you're just spot editing, and now let's say we wanna remove this bit, if I were to delete that, it's gonna delete everything in every track. We might not wanna do that. So just be aware of when you have sync lock turned on, and sometimes you'll want to turn it off. I'm gonna go back another few steps just to show you another way of doing that. Okay, so now we're back to how we were. I'm gonna go ahead and select this bit again, this I'm track one that I wanna remove. And now I'm gonna hit select tracks in all tracks. So now whatever you have selected, it's going to extend that selection across all your tracks. So now if you delete it, 
it'll delete everything evenly without turning that sync lock on. This is great for just removing chunks of audio you know you're not going to want. You can also click and drag across tracks. So here I started at this end, but now I'm going to drag across to the bottom here. And now I can delete this whole I'm track one, I'm track two business just by tapping that delete key. So that's a few different ways you can do it. They actually each come in handy depending on what you're doing. So it's good to keep in mind those different ways of doing that. I like to be really aware of when I have that sync lock tracks turned on and turned off because sometimes if you're working with a lot of tracks and you forget that you have it on, you'll be moving some clips around or deleting some clips and you don't realize if you scroll down, oh, there's tracks below it that you're actually destroying as you go. So I like to turn that sync lock tracks on as little as possible. Now that we've got those I'm track one, I'm track two bits out of the way, let's see what we got now. Birthday. Happy. Okay, so I'm saying birthday happy, which doesn't mean anything. That's not really the order that we want to go in. One thing we can do is we can click this time shift tool or hit F5 to select it. Now we can move this track over here. See what that sounds like. Happy birthday. That makes a little more sense. Of course, if we had the sync lock tracks on and I tried to move that over, not working because it's moving everything all at once. Now I'm going to turn that sync lock tracks off. All right. So far, we've covered giving our tracks titles. We tried out the sync lock tracks feature. And I showed you a couple different ways of making edits in your tracks or across tracks. The last thing we're going to go over in this video is labels. Labels are pretty handy. Uh, maybe not so much when you're only dealing with two tracks, each with one word a piece, but when you're dealing with more complex compositions, labels can be a lifesaver. So let's just hear what we have right now. Birthday. Happy. Okay, so we got birthday and happy and they're back out of order. If only there was an easier way of keeping track of that. Well, now there is. I'm going to select this word birthday. I'm going to hold control and hit B. Now I've got a new label track down here. You can see it says label track. We're going to give this label birthday. So all of your labels are going to go on this track here. You can see birthday is stretching from one point to another corresponding with my selection. If you need to fine tune it though, there's little grabbers here. You can move that beginning or end point of the label around until it's exactly where you need it to be. I'm going to do the same thing over here and label this happy, which once again, I just held the control key and hit B and that added a new label. Labels are not going to automatically stay fixed to your clips. So keep in mind whenever you're moving labels around, you want to select the clip that you're moving around as well as the label. Look at that. Now we're moving them both synchronously. This is not using the sync locks feature because if we did that, the birthday would be moving too. That's no good. So you can just select across tracks like that. Now this is going to illustrate one of the problems with that method. If I select from track one all the way down to this label track, it's also selecting track two. You can move your tracks around by opening up that track menu and hit move track up or move track down, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So now track two is on top. It's going to be a lot easier to select this label and the clip I want to move. So now when we select across, we can move it around easy peasy, put it wherever we want it. I'm going to put it on the other side. Now I'm going to move track two back down to the bottom. Happy moved on us a little bit, so I'm going to move this back so it corresponds with the label. And then now I'm going to select across birthday and the label so I can move them all at once, which is easier to do across this track when there aren't any clips. So if your selection is not intersecting with a clip on one of your tracks, you don't have to worry about accidentally dragging that clip around. So I'm going to move this over so the happy and the birthday are closer together. Now I'm going to select this empty space up front here. I'm going to hit delete and let's hit play and see what that sounds like. Happy birthday. Perfect. And it's labeled down here. Easy peasy. 
If you want, you can have overlapping labels. So I'm going to select this whole section, Control B, add a label, Happy Birthday. So now I can see the whole phrase Happy Birthday is clearly labeled as well as each component of Happy and Birthday. Now your labels aren't really going to be visible on your podcasts or whatever your exported audio is. This is just for while you're working on this document. It does help a lot when you're working on more complex compositions, you're working with a bunch of different clips. Otherwise, you're going to have to re-listen to the same clips over and over just to remember what everything is. So labels, very handy to give them a shot. All right, that's it for this Audacity Quick Tips and Tricks video. Hit that like button if you're feeling it. It does help new viewers to find us. If you like this and you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.